As for Al-Quds, which is called the holy sacred place, Al-Quds, Jerusalem, Palestine and its surrounding. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us that there will always be a migration to Al-Quds, nation after nation, generations after generations, and migration to that place of the believers will never ever stop until the end of time. What does this hadith from Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Which is in Abu Dawood and others. He is saying, never despair or give up hope. Al-Quds has been destined by Allah from the beginning of time till the end of this world. That even if, it's, even if the believers or the people ruling in justice are out of it, they will come back again and again and again. And people will migrate and the migration will intensify until... You look at the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and in the Quranic verses, you can read a book for uh, Imam uh, Al Maududi, for example, in the Tafsir or others, they'll tell you because they're in English, they'll tell you that all the verses of the Quran that talk about it and the hadith, which talk about the, the migration to Al Aqsa, to Al Quds, means that inevitably Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will return the righteous people to it who uphold the Quran. Because it's the final revelation, it came at the end of the Torah, the Injil and Nizams and all the scriptures of Abraham, Moses and Jesus, السلام, and the Quran is the final one to reconfirm the corrupted scriptures and what was lost. The Quran is the final word of Allah that will uphold it and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, which will end with Isa السلام, and the Mahdi, the Khalifa, the believers will return back to it. And this is something which even the orthodox and ultra-orthodox Jews today refer to in the Torah. They say that we are awaiting the Messiah. So there's something in common, and I'll come back to it, inshallah. Ibn Rajab says, This is the end of times as a foretold good news by the Prophet ﷺ that the most righteous among the believers will eventually flock and gather there to Al-Quds and around meaning Asham, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, those areas, a bit of Turkey, and around, extending from it as a final place for the righteous before the world ends. So, there is still to come. The scholar said, This and other hadiths, including verses in Surah Al-Isra, are very strong indications that the Khalifa, the Caliphate, will return, and it is the headquarters it will be the headquarters where in Palestine and the capital city will be Jerusalem for the Khalifa. The hadith called it Asham. And remember, Asham means Palestine, Lebanon, Jordan, uh, bits of uh, Turkey and Syria. Allah says, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَيُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمُ الَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ وَلَيُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنًا يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Allah has promised those who are among you who believe and act righteously that He will surely make them successors as Khalifas in the earth as He made successors for them for, as He made successors from among those who were before them and that he will surely establish for them their religion, which he has chosen for them, and that he will surely grant them security and peace in place of their fear, which they went through. This, how is this verse understood? It is understood, brothers and sisters, that inshallah soon, as people like the Pharaoh, as people like the Romans before, as people like the Persians before, all of those people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exchange their power, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also exchange this ummah and bring back the khilafah of people who will act in righteousness. 
My dear brothers and sisters, the scholars such as Zamakhshari and Shawkani ibn Kathir said, this verse means that Allah has promised a continuation of a successive ruling under the caliph system for the believers who believed in the final book of Allah, the Quran, and his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That just like Allah made nations before the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inherit leadership from other great rulers and empires, Allah will never leave this ummah for, for long without it returning to leadership as a nation on earth, meaning successive caliphate that will always return and continues till the last hour. Rasul said, the Romans will enter into a peace treaty with you. Then you and they will fight one another as enemies and you will be victorious. You will collect the spoils of war and be safe. Then you will come back until you stop in a meadow with many hillocks. A man from among the people of the cross will raise the cross and will say, The cross has prevailed. Then a man among the Muslims will become angry and will go and break the cross. Obviously, this is not a right thing to do, but that's what will happen. Rasul Sallallahu said it will happen. Then the Romans will prove treacherous, breaking the treaty, and will gather for a fierce battle. This has not happened yet, but is yet to come. In another instance, Rasul Sallallahu said, which is in Sahih Muslim, then the Romans will come and have a fierce battle with you that is so intense, so intense, that you will see the flying object falling from the sky. Allahu A'lam, what kind of battle that is. And a group of them will rush from Medina to help their brothers. And a group of those Romans will meet them at a certain place near Asham. And they will say to them, we are not here to fight you. We are going to grab those who have run away from the Muslim army. Run away meaning they're going to regroup. And those Muslims from Medina, they will say, Wallahi, we will not let you go to our Muslim brothers and sisters. Rasul Sallallahu said, a third of them will run away. Allah will never forgive them. From the Muslims. A third of them will die, they are the best martyrs on that day, and a third of them will be victorious. Jannah is for them and no harm will ever affect them. And then they will fall, then they will take Constantinople and it will fall in peace, peacefully. Then the Dajjal will emerge. The Muslims will go back and find that it's false news, and then after a few days, the Dajjal truly has come out. And then Isa alayhi salam, the true Messiah, Jesus the Christ, will descend a little after. As for Jerusalem, Al-Mahdi, let's talk a little bit about him. It says that Al-Mahdi will be running away. He won't know that he's the Mahdi. From a place in the east, some hadiths say he will end up in Medina and from Medina he will run to Mecca. He will not know that he's the Mahdi. He will not know. And he will arrive in Mecca. An army will be following him, also from the east. And they want to kill him. And the earth will swallow them up or something will happen to them. The ulama will look around in Mecca at him and will know that he is the appointed Mahdi. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him righteous and prepared in a very short time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not waste, yani there will not be much time wasted. And he will be the leader, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in many authentic hadiths, he is your khalifa. He will be your khalifa. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, كَيْفَ أَنْتُمْ إِذَا نَزَلَ ابْنُ مَرْيَمَ فِيكُمْ وَإِمَامُكُمْ مِنْكُمْ Oh, how your state will be when the son of Maryam, Isa alayhi wa sallam, the Messiah, Jesus son of Mary, will descend upon you. And while your Imam, your leader will be among you. This hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. And the scholar said your Imam means your Khalifa. It could be Al-Mahdi or someone else. But according to the hadith, it is Al-Mahdi. In Sahih Muslim it says that Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ. Some people said, why do you say Christ? Well, you know, you have your opinion. Some people have their opinion and all that stuff. I'm not going to go into that. But he is Christ. He is Al-Masih. It's translated as Masih loosely. And he is Isa alayhi salam, son of Maryam. Al-Masih ibn Maryam, Prophet ﷺ said, will descend and appear at the white minaret east of Damascus, fi Dimashq, or Jordan, meaning Palestine those days. Those days meant Palestine. With his hands on top of wings of two angels, when he drops his head 
uh, water sprinkles off his hair, and when he lifts his head, pearl-like droplets scatter from his hair. They look like pearls. In Bukhari it says, the hour will not come until the Messiah, son of Mary, will come. He will break the cross and kill the pig and fill the world with justice just as it was filled with oppression. Killing the pig, Allahu A'lam what that means. It doesn't mean literally every pig he sees, he kills the pig. Not the animal. Allahu A'lam what it is. It could mean corruption, filth, immorality. He breaks and kills immorality and filth. Allah knows best what that means. When Isa alayhi salam emerges and the Dajjal arrives, the fight will happen at Jerusalem with Al-Mahdi leading the army of the believers. In Sahih Muslim, uh, Hadith 2922, Rasul ﷺ said, The hour will not begin until the Muslims fight the Jews, and the Muslims will kill them until a Jew hides behind a rock or a tree, and the rock or tree will say, O Muslim, O slave of Allah, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him, except the Gharqad which means a thorny type of tree, for it is one of the trees of the Jews, it will not speak. When does this happen? Some Muslims, they believe that this is going to happen now with the current Israel. No, it has nothing to do with today. Nothing. This happens when, this is towards the end of time. And here's something very interesting for you to know. This happens when Isa alayhi salam, the true Messiah, comes back. Jesus, when the Khalifa is established, when the Mahdi has returned, and when the Dajjal is on earth. What happens? The Dajjal who is in Christian tradition is called the Antichrist in the New Testament. We don't call him the Antichrist. We call him, as the Rasul called him, Al-Masih Al-Dajjal, the false Messiah. Why is he called the false Messiah? Because he will say to the people, I am the Messiah. The Jal will say, I am the Messiah. I am the anointed one. Now in the Hebrew Bible, and I took this information, by the way, from a source called the Jewish Virtual Library. That's my source because, you know, obviously there are Jews who say you don't know our religion. So I just took it from there. Maybe I'm right or wrong. But what it says is this. There's something they believe in called the Messianic or Messianic Age. I don't know if I said that right. Basically, the Messianic age, the Jews believe, is that the Messiah will come back. They are also waiting for the Messiah. And they are going to build the third temple, because the first two temples were destroyed by the Romans before, and by the Babylonians or the Assyrians, I'm not sure, back in, you know, 2000 or something, or 3000 years ago, I'm not sure exactly, but a very long time ago. And the return to Zion, which is another name for Jerusalem, the land of peace, or to the temple of Zion. And they say that there will be peace for all. Goodness and justice will be replaced. It's very similar to what our hadiths talk about, the Mahdi coming back and Isa filling the world with justice and peace. So they have this idea as well, as before. And there are many theories among their rabbis about what the sign is before the Messiah comes. The ultra-Orthodox Jews, I told you, they say we're not allowed to come into Israel. This is oppression according to the Torah. We're meant to be um, exiled and, and dispersed throughout the world. We're not allowed to go in until the Messiah comes and that's when we'll enter. Then you've got the Zionist beliefs and there are so many different types of Zion, political, cultural which is what Einstein was on, cultural Zionist is probably the easiest one, I think. It's the one where they say we're going to live alongside the Palestinians in goodness and fairness and not, you know, and, 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 and not shed blood or something like that. And uh, there is also, uh, as I said, political Zionism, Christian Zionists as well. The Christian Zionists, they say, the Jews have to return back to their homeland in, and, and make a state of Israel in order for the return of Jesus. So that's why they support it. This is, an, this is a one sect of the Christian uh, Zionists. And so on. So it's very complicated. As for the Muslims, Isa, the true Messiah. Jesus, the Christ, the son of Maryam, alayhi salam, Isa al-Masih, ibn Maryam. When he descends, he will enter the masjid in Jerusalem, in Palestine. What does that mean? 
it means that there will be no more Jews or at least the authority of the Jews or Israel will no longer be there anymore according to our sources towards the end of time there will no longer be the authority that the Khalifa will be in Palestine that will be the headquarters and that Jerusalem will be the capital according to the context of the hadiths that I've read and the Isa alayhi salam will enter the masjid, the mosque possibly in Damascus because in those days Palestine or Asham was all of that place uh, and he will see the Imam, the leader of this nation the scholars said he is most likely Al-Mahdi and he will say to him so the, the Mahdi will, will move back as he's about to pray I don't know which Salat, maybe Fajr, maybe Dhuhr, Allahu A'lam God knows and he will say to Isa, the Messiah, to come and pray Imam and Isa alayhi salam, Jesus alayhi salam, peace be upon him, will say to him no, stay and you pray Imam for every nation God has blessed it with their own leaders and he will pray behind the Mahdi Isa al-Masih, the Prophet sallallahu he will pray behind the Mahdi and he will join the Ummah following the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي by the one who possesses my soul in his hand if Musa, Musa alayhi salam was here with me today he will not do anything except follow me. He will follow the Quran and my Sunnah because he's the last prophet. So Isa alayhi salam will also follow the Quran because the last revelation of Allah and the last prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he will say, you are the leader of this ummah. He doesn't come as the Khalifa, but as a guide in a different way. Then the Dajjal. The Dajjal is called the Antichrist in Islam, the false Messiah, the lying Messiah. His story is very long. Now, we don't know if a Dajjal is now living. We don't know if the Dajjal is alive since then, whether he's coming out, what's his story. The point is, a false Messiah will come out and say, I am the Messiah, but he is lying. After that, he will say, I am God. And the people will take him as a God. Now, let's look at the Jews' scriptures. They're saying the Messiah is coming. It makes sense now that if they follow him, because the Prophet wasallam, he says, the Dajjal will come from the east and with him 70,000 Jews of Asfahan. Now, we don't know if it's the, literally from Asfahan or, there, or that they had gone out of uh, Israel and all that and they've become dispersed in the land. They all come back thinking he is the Messiah that they are waiting for. And the majority of his followers will be the Jews according to our sources. And among them are Christians and Romans and others. And they will be heading towards where? Towards Jerusalem. Now, also makes sense if you look at their scriptures, which they say they are going to go back in with the Messiah to rebuild the third temple of Solomon, or the third temple, whatever they call it, on Zion. So they'll be coming with their Messiah, which we, in our sources, is the false Messiah. He is actually the Dajjal. Because it will show them signs. Allah subhanahu wa will give him certain powers that will make them believe that he is a god. They literally believe that he is a god. Allah knows best. A lot of Jews will disagree because they don't worship other gods beside Allah. But something will happen according to our religious sources which make them believe that at least he's a partner to God. When he enters Jerusalem, he comes to Jerusalem, Isa alayhi salam, the, the, the true Messiah, will be with the Muslims, with the righteous people and the Mahdi. And he will say to the Mahdi, open the gate, the gate of Jerusalem. And the gate will be opened and the Dajjal, the Antichrist, will be waiting behind the door, thinking that he's going to enter with his followers and his army, accompanied by an army of 70,000 Jews from the east, and he will be dressed, they will be dressed in robes of green color satin. Rasul said, There's two different interpretations. Either they are green colored satin robes, or it means a type of helmet. The hadith is in Muslim. As soon as the Dajjal sees Isa alayhi salam when he opens the door of Jerusalem, he runs away and the hadith says that he starts to melt. I don't know how, but that's the hadith. We leave it at that. Isa alayhi salam runs after him and he takes his sword out or whatever weapon he has and he kills the Dajjal. And the Dajjal bleeds and then he lifts the sword or whatever weapon he has 
and shows the, his army and says, If he was God, will he bleed? And at that point, a lot of the Christians who were following, thinking he is Jesus the returning, they repent and follow the true Messiah, Isa alayhi salam. The point is, after that, there will be years of peace, justice, goodness, repentance, only Allah knows how long. Al-Mahdi will rule for seven to eight years, meaning he will die within that time. Some hadith said that it will be ten years for Isa al-Masih, Isa alayhi salam. Allah knows best.